Hello everyone, once again this is G, and this is a follow-up on a previous video I made about maxing out the ribbon cable. And if you haven't seen that one yet, make sure to check it out in the description below. I want to show you a little countdown clock here that I've been working on recently. So if you like crazy, make sure to hit that thumbs up because it really helps with the algorithm. This contraption here uses 28 pixel packs and incidentally 28 bits on this bus to control it. And as it happens, I also forgot that there's 60 seconds in a minute and I just made everything to the nines. But anyways, this is a prototype. So there's lots of tweaks to it that we can do. Let me get you an overlay so you can see what's going on. Okay, so you can see above here, we have each section uses seven bits and this pixel pack uses seven bits and so forth. And this one uses bits one through seven. This one uses bits eight through 14, 15 to, through 21 and 22 to 28. And I'm just using right to left just cause it's easier for me to look at it from binary. But anyway, highlighted in red over here, these are all the pixels that are not being used and highlighted in blue. These are the pixels that are combined. And so you only need one bit for both of these pixels together. So in, in total, you have seven bits and these are the bits here, bit 28, 27, 26, 22 and so forth. And same thing here. You have 15 at the top, 21 at the bottom and one at the top, seven at the bottom and so forth. And if we look at the automation, you can see here the stuff behind the scenes. Here what we have on the receiving end is we have the bus coming in and then we are shifting the bits so that we can uh, dial them down to the uh, one through seven. So I know it says 22 through 28, but actually after they go through all the bit shifts, they come down to one through seven, but on the main bus, they are represented as 22 through 28. So that's why I wrote them down like this here, just so it's simpler to understand. Anyways, let's have a look here. If you think this is crazy, you should see the machine that powers all of this. Let's have a look at that. There it is. And let me pull up an overlay just so you can make sense of all this. There we go. So at the bottom, we have four sections in yellow. Each of these sections is connected to each of the pixel pack displays. And these sections in yellow, they represent uh, variables. So each column is one variable. And actually, if we have a look over here, uh, let's have a look here. There we go. That should make a little bit more sense. So if you look at the section on the right, these are the seconds. And in fact, it's actually two seconds in one, uh, in one go. It's, it's every two seconds. It flips a number. And each of these columns uh, represents a uh, pattern that is displayed. And for example, we have first column here is zero. The second column represents figure one. The next one represents two, three, and so forth, all the way till nine. And we have one of each of these for each display. But we need to be able to control these numbers and display them in order. And so what we have here is we have a little plumbing control mechanism, as you can see here. And if we look over here, let's have a look at this. There we go. That should make a little bit more sense now. So as you can see, highlighted in red are specific uh, bits that make up the uh, pattern. And they're all the same. So across, it's all bit one. Acro uh, across next is bit two and so forth, all the way till bit seven. Looking over here, we have liquid sensors and they are arranged in such a way that uh, this one here is representing zero, one, and they go in reverse. So it goes zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you can see what happens here if we switch to automation. You can see this bead of water is activating each of these uh, columns at a time. And it's calling upon a variable to be sent into this bus. All right, let's have a look at this again. All right, there we go. <clears throat> let's look at the control mechanism for the next level. So the first display is relatively simple. And then the second display is triggered by the first display. You can see here this input, uh, this uh, this bit right here, this rollover. Okay, so the rollover is what controls the 
uh, rollover of the next display. As in, when this finally hits zero on the first display, it needs to then roll over onto the second display and do something. Uh, over here, once again, we have the variables at the bottom. But at the top, we have representing the memory, we have these uh, packets of water. So again, we have plumbing here. And it's arranged in order and it's clockwise. But anyways, each of these represent a particular bit that is then pushed into these um, uh, variable stacks here, if you will. And anyway, so when the bead over here is at number six, it sends a value down and it matches to the six here. And I see now it went to five. Five is, uh, is uh, lit up, so we can see here. Now four is lit up and so forth. Anyways, sends a value here, but we also need to make sure that this bead doesn't continue on its way and it's uh, moved along uh, very carefully. And so that's why we have this mechanism over here. So we have uh, even valves and we have, I'm sorry, uh, shutoffs. We have even shutoffs and we have odd shutoffs. And over here, we have a mechanism for making sure that only even or only odd shutoffs are activated. And we have a selector up here. You know, I finally found a use for this signal distributor. I really couldn't find a use for it until now. But anyways, over here, we have all of these representing the odd values. And over here, all the even values, which map to these valves or shutoffs. I'm just going to call them valves, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, if you look over here, if any of these are on, it will trip this... Uh, and go into this filter gate, which is uh, going to wait for five seconds before activating the uh, selector. And then the selector is going to send a green signal only when it receives a green signal on the feed here. But the green signal comes in from the rollover. Once the first display hits zero, a signal comes in. It's going to go into this pulse generator over here, which is using just a NOT gate and an end and a buffer. It then sends it into this bus, which then comes across. I'm just using this bus just to be able to fit all the wires in. Otherwise, there's not enough room. Anyway, it, it comes in here, goes into the selector or distributor. And then based on the odd or even position of, the, of these switches here, it will then go either to turn on all the odd shutoffs or all the even shutoffs. And so if a liquid is... Stay in, if the liquid is sitting before the even shutoff, it will activate the even shutoffs. If the liquid is sitting before an odd shutoff, it will activate only the odd shutoffs. And that will prevent the liquid from continuing accidentally going and uh, circling around and passing the valve. So we want to make sure that the liquid passes one valve and then stops at the next valve. That's why we're doing this whole odd and even business. Over here, we have the circuits to actually control the valves. So we have this bus here, and it's going through this bridge, and through this bridge, and through here. So the signal comes from the distributor, hits either one or two. Yep, two or one. It hits this bus, comes in this way, and it either activates odd or even shutoffs. Anyways, let's have a look over here. So then it needs to roll over to the next display, and then to the next one. And so what we had to do is stack these rollover wires into this bus here. So we have when the first counter hits zero, it then rolls over the second counter. But then when the second counter hits zero, we do not want it to immediately roll over the third counter. We want it to only roll over the third counter if the second counter hits zero and then the first counter hits zero as well. So the moment both of them hit zero, this one will send a green signal down into this wire which is then will follow this path here as it's outlined over here. So it's if this one is green, it will send it down one of these particular ones and it will only activate either even or odd shutoffs. And then over here, finally, we have three conditions. We want to make sure that this one is set to zero, this one is zero, and the first one is zero. And if all three are zero, it will then finally roll over this one. And then it will advance forward the next... Uh, position over here. You can see it already advanced it. So anyways, that's how this thing works. I'm sure you may have lots of questions. Please post them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them and maybe even do a follow-up video on this. But for now, that's all I have for you. 
This has been Greasy Hammer, and if you found this interesting or inspiring, then smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.